graduated from FSU in 1986 with a degree in geography and urban and regional planning. He's been working with in urban planning his entire career in municipal and environmental planning. Been blessed to be employed with the great city of Upper Hill since 96, something about the best city manager he's worked for for the past year and a half. I, no, that's not in there. I, that's, I'm, that's not in there. Sorry. He started out with the city working by himself, but now um, he works with a department of three other professional planners. His hobbies include FSU sports, tennis, and volunteering for New Walt Church. Mr. Vandenberg. All fogged up. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. I've been asked to talk about three topics today, and those are growth and development, what we have going on transportation wise, and then I'll continue some additional discussion on a key priority for our community, which is the Zephyr Hills Industrial Corridor Master Plan. And although I'm talking about those, um, topics, I'd like to provide kind of an overarching theme that I'm sort of tying these three topics to, and that's to resiliency, maybe economic resiliency and what that means. And let's see, I've got the slide. I'd have to ask Audrey that question. <laughs> So economic resiliency in Zephyr Hills, the first two slides I have are some, some quotes that we have from, that I just pulled from the U.S. Economic Development Administration. And it relates, resiliency kind of deals with what we've been going through in 2020, in my opinion. And what they say about economic resiliency is an area's ability to prevent, withstand, and quickly recover from shocks that we've been experiencing to our economic base. And the second slide is another quote that comes from them. Um, you know, we've been facing these economic shocks that have been a result of several different events that have occurred in 2020. And you can see on the slide there, uh, COVID-19 of course has been a biggie. Uh, the volatility of the stock market, uh, natural events have occurred, um, just to, to name a few um, that we've experienced this year. And in this quote, they say economic shocks often manifest from downturns, significant events in the state, different governmental levels for locally, locally produced goods and services and consumer spending. So we've seen a dramatic shift in in the way things are occurring. I'll talk a little bit more about that in our presentation. So the best practices slide here, you can see uh, where we're trying to locally here at the Zephyr Hills level, look at resiliency and, and look at some of the best practices from a local level of government perspective and how we can uh, help our community become more resilient. Um, as you can see on the slide here, um, we're going to be updating our city comprehensive plan and we're continuously updating our land development code. And the things that we're experiencing this year are, are having dramatic impacts on industry, retail, small businesses, even our schools. So we're going to be looking at updates to our comprehensive plan. And I, I file what's happening on, at the state level and national levels of planning and you're starting to see a lot of shifts in how communities are doing their planning. I think hazard mitigation you see up there, probably we have hazard mitigation, local mitigation strategy with Pasco County that we work with them at the local level. And I think that might even become uh, more important. And, and as we see these shifts, it just further pronounces the importance of, you know, broadening, expanding our economic base, making it more diversified to get us through these shocks of the experiences that we've seen this year. And then we feel like we also need to look at identifying, supporting, and incentivizing all those things to, to make our, uh, to provide more of a diverse workforce, provide for training opportunities as retail probably slows down more into industrial. We need to make sure we have training opportunities available out there to provide for those quality industry and manufacturing jobs and businesses. 
we need to continue to work with our schools. At ZEDC, we identified that as a priority to, to look at our schools and try to help them out, to assist them, to raise the level, the grade of our schools, because that is a quality of life issue that's gonna make our community more resilient. And then at the bottom there, you see quality of life issues also make our community more resilient and you know, in the form of recreation, uh, community gathering places, all these uh, uh, practices we feel, best practices will make our community more resilient and, and make us help us get more through these uh, shocks that we've experienced this year uh, in, in the future as well. Okay, um, this, this is an interesting map where I kind of tie in a lot of different things into a regional perspective, kind of zooming out from a resiliency standpoint. I like this map, it, it shows, you know, you can see where Zephyr Hills and our industrial corridor is highlighted in the middle of so much, you know, our proximity to Orlando, to Lakeland, Plant City, Tampa, uh, the Gulf Coast, uh, um, and you see the Tampa Port Authority down there. Uh, so much that we're close to that we need to continue to work with and, and take advantage of. Um, and particularly with that Port Authority, we think there's a lot of opportunity there. And one of the hurdles I think we've got to get over transportation wise is Hillsborough County MPO right now doesn't want a four lane 301 from Fowler where it saw all the way four lane down to the Port Authority but, and it continues north up to Fowler. But then of course it transitioned to two lane road all the way to Zephyr Hills. So I sit on the MPO's technical advisory committee and have brought up our MPO needs to to gather with the Hillsborough County MPO and really emphasize the importance of getting that segment of road four lane. Uh, that four lane corridor will may pay off huge dividends, I think, uh, for the manufacturing and just overall betterment of our transportation network. So we've got to continue to work with that. We, we have another slide too that's in our Zephyr Hills Industrial Corridor Master Plan. Uh, that shows all the industrial that's occurring along this I-4 corridor and how it's filling up. So we might be a next logical location for that industrial manufacturing opportunities to come to. <clears throat> Infrastructure, of course, is gonna make us more resilient. It, it's a key element to growth and development. Um, on the right there, you see the utilities, um, you know, that serves all, all types of development, of course, and you got to have it. You see the uh, Duke transmission lines that are going down kind of road 54, just impressive investments being made by Duke because they understand and see the development that's coming our way uh, for our current and our uh, future needs. Utilities, we got to be real cognizant of our utility service boundary lines and do I've talked with John about our utilities director doing a build out scenario so we know how much, what type of development, what the demand for that capacity for both water and sewer is gonna be, not only in our existing city boundaries, but our utility service boundaries. So we can best plan for that. So when development opportunities come by, some of these manufacturers need a lot of water. So we gotta be prepared for that, not only for residential, but for more importantly, the manufacturing and industrial. Um, then transportation, of course, uh, how important that is. That you see the map on the left that shows, can't see it really too well, apologize, of showing the local and the county and state roads that connects our people and industry, industry together. Um, continuing to look at maximizing our potential. We're unique in that we have a pretty good roadway network being developed in our work with State Road 56, the county and state roads. We are continuing to work on our air. We have rail that's gonna benefit the industrial corridor to again make us very resilient, but we gotta continue working on that. Um, and pedestrian, bicycle, circulation, connectivity. We have a, a citywide master plan and the county as well, so we work with them. Then we're trying to uh, also get a little more diverse in our transportation uh, layout with complete streets where 
uh, we can be a little more smarter in how the streets operate and how they look, how they function. So we're, we're looking at develop some complete street standards that'll be incorporated into our, our land development code. Here's some just additional slides uh, where we show our, our, on the left, the utilities map, where we show the utility service district. The area highlighted black is our current boundaries, but we do provide utilities outside that area that you see in, in the blue. Um, Duke provide us the electric, electricity maps there, where you can see uh, probably what stands out is we do have the capacity now to provide a good amount of electricity uh, around the corridor, Chansey Road. So that's going to help us down the road as the as the manufacturing takes off. And then, of course, all the different types of utilities there, communication networks you see on the right with cellular, internet, fiber, cable, all those. Um, yeah, roadways. This slide shows some of our major transportation projects. Uh, you know, Wilton's not here, but you know, I think y'all know he helped us with the two first ones on the far left and the middle one. Uh, we're just getting started with US 313 Pond Road. Um, we're gonna relocate the traffic signal, of course, to that intersection. And uh, we're installing a new, new uh, traffic signal at, at the Dairy Queen there. Gonna punch through the median, punch through Townview Shopping Center where Panera is so we can facilitate better the transportation needs of both north and south ends of those two shopping centers. And, and of course, 301 Purdy Ponce, it's a large retail node. Uh, Chick-fil-A is going in the corner there. They were waiting for that intersection project to happen, so I'm happy to share that they're still on board. Get asked that a lot. <laughs> um, what I don't have on here is County Road 54. Count, City Council just approved uh, an agreement uh, partnering with Pasco County to make improvements on County Road 54, which is one of our big, bigger areas of need, both to improve the capacity. Uh, add, we're adding some turn lanes, uh, add a new signal at 23rd Street, adding a trail on the, uh, the high school side and a sidewalk on the, uh, on the north side. So that'll be a big improvement. And I also show on the right side there, 7th Street. We're working with Kimberly Horn, 7th Street, the potential future is to convert that back to bi-directional two-way traffic and to make that a complete street. So we're, we're doing a preliminary PD&E, uh, planning, design, engineering, environmental study to, to lay that out, come up with a projected estimate, might propose a, a legislative appropriation uh, for that roadway improvement. Uh, we continue to work with DOT. I won't spend a lot of time. I see only got a couple minutes left about what's going on on 301 and 6th Street, but working with DOT on that still. Um, this slide is for growth and development. Um, so the question is how can we continue to evolve with smart growth, making our building fabric even, even resilient? And we feel like we're, we're moving in that direction. On the bottom slide there, you see how we did a form-based code, traditional type development along the street for our city hall. We decided to make an investment on in our public building. Yeah, it wasn't cheap, but we, we set that standard there to do that. Uh, we also on the middle slide wanna take care and preserve our historical resources in the downtown area where we have that historic fabric. And then that top slide there, you show a, a whole block building scenario where Again, it's form-based code, mix of use, the building's brought up the street. And, uh, and you know, what we want to do um, by supporting diverse, uh, from a resiliency standpoint, um, you, you can see we want to update our land development code, our, our comprehensive plan. I won't read all these, but we're gonna look at our codes and continue to work on form-based code and new development and redevelopment to make sure it's resilient and uh, built a certain form and fabric that, that sets a new stage like, like you're beginning to see downtown now. So what do we have coming? Um, on the residential side, the housing on the left, Abbott Park is the big residential 500 units behind the uh, public shopping center. Abbott Square is a planned development around the SVB Tennis Center, about 700 some units. Uh, Lengths of Calusa Springs, uh, 
Cayabinian Builder, they're just getting started on the north end of Silver Oaks Golf Course. The Oaks of Pasco is just to the south of them. They're, they're building. And Skybird Properties is over there by the airport, kind of off Austin Road, a new residential development. Mixed use, we got Zephyr Commons uh, doing some multifamily. The, the picture shows the gateway, which could be single family, multifamily, small office or businesses on the corners. Uh, commercial, we have Chick-fil-A, Chipotle, the veterans uh, facility is getting started. Uh, we've got some nice industrial activity and under the recreation, we're planning for some improvements at Hercules Park there behind Wawa. And I show a slide of the SVB Tennis Center there. That's a recent slide from yesterday showing almost the completion of that, which we're holding the grand opening Saturday. Okay, our form-based code, I talked a little bit about that. Map on the left shows the three different districts that we have in our form-based code, North Avenue to C Avenue, between 6th and 7th Street. Um, you can see the, Chris, the crystal bar is being rebuilt. It's uh, got a certain height elevation as a minimum that they're meeting. It is only one floor, but a higher elevation on the front facade there. Um, complete street on the right corner. Uh, complete streets from our form-based code in the center there. And we show a, a concept rendering if we get a whole block, 300 by 300, of how that mixed use, uh, how you can see how much more development and how more flexible we are with the understanding we're gonna be doing a, a master stormwater plan, a master parking plan. This is an interesting slide. Uh, we're, we're, we're seeing trends in Florida, like we're seeing nationally, where there's been heavy, heavier investment in warehousing than retail. I think a lot of that has to do with COVID and how, you know, even before COVID and with Amazon and everything, where retail is starting to, to go down a little bit. And as a result of that, it, it seems like the trends are with the pandemic and everything that more people working from home businesses working from home and the, the additional trend is that you're seeing more e-commerce and um, seeing more investment uh, by the investors in into um, industrial and out of retail so it'll be interesting to see how that goes so why plan for industrial we show our land use context map we want resiliency new jobs increased revenues economic impact and we're gonna look at, of course, land uses and compatibility. Here's a, I'm finishing quickly, I know. Um, here's our site readiness map that we've laid out, talked with CSX and the orange mark line uh, is for a rail alignment that, that could be done on that property. Here we have, we're working with our Dura and we've identified three sites. You can see in the upper left-hand map, this first one's gonna be what we, considers the gateway at 39 and Chansey Road, where we're proposing some development and we work with Ardura. They've done some land use scenario. Uh, I will provide a disclaimer on these three sites. We haven't met with the property owners. These are just conceptual. Some of the next steps will involve working with the, the property owners and further refining. These aren't approved plans. Uh, and we have a little video we'd like to share. So it's a little hard to see, but you can see a layout on the upper right. You see a gateway entryway with a retention, kind of an overview of how that site could be developed out with some industrial uses, some C3 heavier commercial uses, maybe some heavier industrial with truck bays in the back. So that's just a nice uh, overview, again, conceptual that we worked on with our Dura. This site is very unique in that it's a mining site right now. So the plan will show uh, a liner industrial along the frontage, but then when the mining is done, we'd like to convert it to a, a recreational facility like Santos in Ocala, which they do the mount mountain biking like you see on the pictures with the wooden apparatuses. One thing I will point out, what I really like about the slide on the left, and that's not for this site, but we want to transportation wise get those trucks at this curvature in the road off the main road so you can see a, an extensive ingress egress off the main road in that upper left hand corner okay here's the layout Again, that mining operation in the back we think we have a very unique opportunity to bring some recreational element 
the people from all over the state go to Santos. We've got connecting trails, the Green Swamp, the Hillsborough River Basin. We've talked a little bit with Swift Mud already. Okay. And this is the last one, uh, another gateway at County Road 54 and Chansey Road. Play the video. We, we've gotten examples of smaller industrial, um, thousand, couple thousand industrial flex space, large, in large manufacturing with bays. So we're, we're not showing all that in here, but we've been looking at a lot of different options and opportunities of how this could, could uh, develop. Um, again, I see Tim here, our plans are to, to meet with you guys once we further refine this a little bit. These are just for display purposes. And of course, we'll be having some meetings with property owners. Um, so here we kind of talk about the final slide with our next steps. We're going to meet with large industrial property owners, uh, have some more stakeholder meetings, talk more with industrial brokers, try to find that right niche, uh, continue our airport related work. Uh, we appreciate the PDC, I mean the TBRPC and Sarah and the, their group and what they provided earlier, continue working with them. Uh, continue talking with CSX and continue our master plan updates as well as the regulatory updates I've discussed. Um, I just wanted to thank our, our partners and what we've been working on the industrial quarter, Tammy Verana, Ardura, Duke Energy, the TBRPC, ZEDC, and the Pasco EDC. Okay, and I'm five minutes over, I apologize. Thank you. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> How much weight does city Central City Council and land plan land planning development give to the community ideas of local business and landowners serving city Yeah, I think that's a great question. And how this all got started is we had stakeholder meetings. And we, we had a whole variety of five or six, I think, different stakeholder groups, one of them being business, industry, manufacturing. So yeah, the whole purpose of that is to get early uh, communication and discussions with those businesses and property owners to, to, to get them involved. And although we've done something conceptual, now we, again, propose to do additional stakeholder meetings, meeting with the property owners to to further those discussions with them. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Todd. I know there was a question that came in that asked if the slides and the presentations would be available. Uh, those will be available on Clearly Zephyr Hills, the Clearly, clearly Zephyr Hills .com website uh, by the end of this week. Up next, we have Tom Ryan to uh, talk to us about the Zephyr Hills Ready sites. Tom is the economic development of business, the economic development of business development for Pasco Economic Development Council. Tom is responsible for business development of new and expanding office, technology, and industrial related businesses and parks. His responsibilities also include coordinating strategies to support economic development efforts in targeted areas, including the confidential site analysis regulatory assistance, compiling location data, and incentive programs. Mr. Tom Ryan. Thank you, Billy. Uh, not used to being behind a podium, but I know this is for our audience, so I'll stay here as best I can. Uh, last year, we showed you the uh, Zephyr Hills Industrial Business Park, which is on the north end of the airport. Uh, this year, uh, through the help of uh, Steve Toner, up here. We now have a new site that we're going to go ahead and let it run and I'll talk out.
So you'll have to pardon the ragtime music that wasn't part of the uh, program. But it is kind of fitting. It makes me want to go to Main Street, Zebra Hills, have a drink. I want to give a huge call out to our Director of Marketing and Communications, Lauren Masali. So, um, and that's for your entertainment. But anyways, I wanted to give a call out to Lauren Maselli. She and I were literally working on this yesterday afternoon to get it ready for today. So she did uh, some uh, monumental work to get this ready for us. I also want to introduce Steve uh, Toner of Sperry Van Ness uh, SVN Brokers. He is representing the property owners of the North Tampa Bay Industrial Park. That is now the name of that business park. So that is what we will use for marketing and Steve will use for marketing and uh, he can give you more information as it relates to the to the actual brokered side of the deal. What we do at the Ready Sites is we market the program and uh, through Steve's efforts he got the property owners to participate in the program. And so as you know with uh, uh, Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council we're trying to figure out what industry clusters we should attract to each site. So now we have two Ready Sites in Zephyr Hills. Very uh, a, big advantage for Zephyr Hills because we're elevating the uh, sites into national presence and uh, uh, site consultants. And to give you an example, and, and we're just getting started with North Tampa Bay Business Park, but uh, the Zephyr Hills Industrial uh, Airport Industrial Park, we've already had two major national uh, uh, projects come and uh, evaluate the site, uh, go in depth conversation. One flew in and looked at the site uh, the Linville family was was with us on that uh, property tour. We don't always win those big projects, but to get them here is a huge win. I, you have to understand, I always equate it to baseball. If you don't go up to the plate and start swinging, you're never going to hit any kind of home runs. So right now we're trying to hit singles and doubles, and we're trying to get people to the sites. And so through this marketing program, we're elevating the uh, sites into the Tampa Bay region, but also nationally. And I take these with me when the trade shows uh, ramp up again. Uh, I take these videos with me and I take the information with me about what we're trying to target there. As you saw on the utility side, we probably have the most information we've had yet on utilities. Uh, Aubrey Brown of CSX has been uh, very aggressive in trying to be more involved into the Tampa Bay region. So he's he's literally following the rail line all the way from uh, Zephyr Hills all the way into Tampa, uh, into Polk. Uh, he's literally following the rail, talking to EDCs, talking to communities about getting rail spurs uh, concept maps. Those are not going to be there unless a private entity develops those rail spurs, but that opens up a whole new uh, avenue of, of uh, recruitment for us so that we can go after rail served industries because the site that is high and dry right in the middle is about a hundred plus acres and that's big enough to bring in a rail user. Uh, but we're not just going to focus on that. We also focus a lot on trying to make sure that we are incorporated into the master development plan of Zephyr Hills. We don't want to get ahead of it. It's the gateway. So it's very important to have the first impression be the best. But we also want to make sure we tie into the north on the Zephyr Hills uh, Airport Industrial Park so that each site will have a very specific uh, group of industries we'll probably try to attract there. Uh, they will all be targeted industries, as we already talked earlier. And the target industry sectors also qualify for incentives through the county and uh, sometimes through the city of Zephyr Hills as they partner with the county on certain pro uh, programs. Uh, I, I have a very short time. We have an interactive map. I don't know. It looks like we're having a little problem. Okay, so the interactive map is on our website, pascoedc.com. It's all live now. You can look at both sites plus the four additional sites we have. And I don't think I have much time for questions, but maybe one if you have one. Yeah, go ahead. Um, first of all, thank you. That video was great. I, I see it in the four track box. It does appear to have some new information on it. And um, secondly, I just wanted to ask uh, how are you getting these site selectors here? Is it, uh, is it a concerted effort, I imagine, in terms of uh, marketing efforts and perhaps the closest marketing efforts? Any other? Sure. So that's a great question because um, 
Pasco County Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Ron Oakley can attest, uh, help pass through the penny of Pasco uh, what's called enhanced marketing of these ready sites. So the enhanced marketing program is a strategically um, a developed program that attracts uh, site consultants, uh, industrial brokers, uh, national uh, developers into those sites. So those sites are, are targeted not only through print media, online media, me going to those shows I told you about, and us uh, literally doing uh, FAM tours, as we call them, familiar tours, uh, with those site consultants. COVID has, has thrown a monkey wrench in that right now, so we're doing a lot more online, a lot more to discussing online, a lot more video. Uh, and just to be clear, that that video is brand new. It's right out of the oven. It's 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 freshly baked. Uh, the one that you may be referencing is the second site, or the first site. This is the second site in Zephyr Hill. So remember, when you go to our uh, website, www.pascoadc.com, go to the Ready Sites drop down, and you will see six sites. There's two in Zephyr Hills. So each one is unique in what it offers as it relates to a target industry. All right, thanks a lot.